Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, the hood is up, the door is open. We are starting to add the Oxbeam controller. Oxbeam sent this out to me, told me, check it out, give us a review, install it, hook up everything you got coming for the truck. So we're gonna start getting this installed. Again, we are at Ghostly Rich's house. He's got a lot of goodies that are usually in this garage, but they're not here as of right now. So you can go and check out his stuff and see what he's got. But as for this video, we're going to be installing it on my 2023 Frontier. So probably the biggest part of this job or the most hassle is getting the wire through the underside of your engine bay into the actual interior of the truck. And we have got up in here, you may see, it might be a little bright, the GoPro is in the way, but there's a rubber grommet up in there. You'll see it better once the wires fish through. But stab a hole through that and then run your wire through and you should be able to use a wire or a coat hanger or whatever. Now under the hood we have stabbed this fish tape through the rubber grommet. If you look down just get some light in there for you. You can see the black rubber grommet down there. And that is where this thing's coming through and where your wire will be fished back in. And here's the underside with the fish tape through. You can see actually what we're aiming for is here. And there's those black wires in the sheathing there is actually what's going through at that point. So you're aiming for that grommet, poke it through, and you should be able to pull the new one back. All right, so what we've done is we've just wired with some electrical tape to the fish tape onto the wire that plugs into the control panel. All these parts, I did an unboxing video. You can watch that if you want. Go back and check out all the parts. But... Ghostly Rich here has went and got a little bit of dish soap. So we'll soap it up a bit, make it a little more slick because the end here is quite thick. It'll help hopefully to pull it through there without making too big of a hole and should keep all the bugs and water and dust from getting in afterwards. All right, so we have the wire through. One guy fished it down, one guy pulled. So you can see there now, a little better shot. It does go through. Got to give it a little bit of pressure when you're pulling it through, but it will pop in. When you come around this side, you can see now we have it inside nice and clean and you can decide on the length of your wire when the time comes to that point. All right, so we got a kind of quick mock up here. What we're going to do is with some Velcro, double sided Velcro, I'm actually going to stick the main control box on the fuse panel lid. And then you can see you have a long red wire and one black wire. That's your positive negative. It'll come down through here and up to the circuit breaker here. You also get one shorter red one. That is to go from the other side of your circuit breaker to the battery itself. According to their instructions, they want the side with the switch here. It says 60 amp. So this one will go to the battery where this side will go back to the control panel. And if you're wondering, this is just a little plastic thing. It pops off, keeps all the gunk and everything out of here. Can just click on when you're done so what we're going to do is get it all wired up here get it nice where it should be and then it can show you exactly where everything goes and you shouldn't end up with a hot mess of wires under your hood all right so one last step you got to do before you put the cover back on the fuse box and get everything in there is get this wire in the box so what we did is just above the little lip in here we drilled a tiny hole Cover it with some silicone after so you don't have to worry about anything actually dripping inside your fuse box. But then plug your wire or your fuse in. Trim this to the length you need. You don't have to keep all this extra wound up in there. You can trim it to what you need because all you need is the end of the wire to plop into there. So this will go in, trim it, plug it in, and then this is ready to go to the control panel. All right, so everything here is done inside the fuse panel. You can see trim your wire to the length you need. Put it in here, crimp it down, that's all you got to do. And then plug your fuse back in right down here. If you don't have a fuse puller, luckily on the cap, you can see this is the cap for the actual control panel itself. They do give you a few spare fuses and this little fuse puller. So you don't have to have any fancy tools, you don't need anything if your fingers are too big. This is in there, easy, nice little piece of plastic and hook it on pull it out you're good to go all right so once everything is done in the fuse panel put the cap back on make sure you clean this up really good what we did was we ended up just getting some of this 
really strong double-sided tape, which is Velcro on the inside. So put that on there, stick it down. Then worst case, you need to get this out of the way. You can just peel up the Velcro and it's out of your way if you need to get into the box. You don't have to drill holes or anything like that. And then you can see, just plug in all your wires. You got two and a four. That's basic, only fits one spot, clicks in. Positive, there's a positive under there. Negative, same thing, black and red. Plug them in, and as for the inside of the box, that's all you gotta do. All right, so we have her all connected under here. Everything is good to go. You can see everything is down. All you gotta make sure when you put this on, we have a Velcro, like I said. The spacing here where your wires will feed through, make sure it's hanging off the edge of the lid. Then when you put some wires for your lighting in, comes up in between the two boxes and just hides the mess. Then follow the wires down. All we did was come down here. You can see I put the circuit right on the battery itself, just with double-sided Velcro as well. This one comes down here around, and we hooked it up right to the connector for the positive to the battery. And then the other one comes down here up to your control panel. Only thing that will have to be changed a little bit is this plastic cover. That being because we came off of the side here instead of straight out, the notches for the cable are straight out. So I'll just have to cut off one little corner here. And when that clicks down, everything should fit fine still. And we did trip this just so you don't have power running through the system right now. And then what Richard did is if you follow this black cable down and it comes across here, we tied it to the thick black cable going all the way across and then pulled the excess down back into the truck where you saw we poked the hole through there at the beginning of the video. All right, so now that we have this all wired up and we tested it, we actually lied to you guys. The 10 amp fuse that I pulled right here for the daytime running lights actually has constant power. I figured when the lights turn off, it should lose power, but it doesn't. So the panel on the inside was staying on constantly. So what we did is we went back in here. You can see we pulled the fuse, third one down. And what it is, it's listed here. It's hard to see on the camera, of course, but there's a left and right hand clearance is what it says. And I believe that is for the trailer lights if you were to be towing a trailer. So that doesn't have constant power. So you can see right now, if you look in the truck, the panel is off. If we come over here, We'll flip our breaker back on so you know that it has power. It is still off, but if we unlock the door, there you go. She turns on. Everything would be running. If you had lights plugged in, you could turn it on. And then we'll lock it. And when you can see, we'll come over here. When the daytime running lights turn off, it does take a little bit. They turn off. Now when you come back over here, panel's off. All right, now moving on to the inside of the vehicle, that is where we have the cable pulled through. I'm gonna basically feed it up by the pedals here, down the edge, and I'm gonna mount it in the little space, the cubby hole here. And what this comes with is a couple different mounts, and one of them is for the switch panel, or the control panel, whatever you wanna call this. And the little screws and everything to put this on are all in the box, everything comes with it and this just rotates so you can get it on the proper angle. Now I'm just gonna have it mounted like so. Probably stick the double-sided Velcro on there as well so it doesn't wobble around, but the cable will be hidden up behind and tucked away, no wires, no mess. Other option you can do, depending where you're mounting this thing, you can drill into the dash if you're brave enough, depending what vehicle you have. I know some people just mount the thing on any flat surface they can find. Same idea with double-sided tape or such. And in this specific vehicle, I've actually seen a couple people put it up in the glasses holder here. The only thing for me, it does look cool. It's tucked away. You can fold it away out of sight, out of mind. But when you're using it and this thing is down, it's right in the way for your rear view mirror. So, and I actually use this for my sunglasses once in a while as well. So for me, it's gonna be tucked away in here. It takes up a little bit of space, but you still got this whole side for storage and here, plus everything up here and the center console. So it gives you plenty of room to store your things still. All right, so the control panel itself I put behind in the little cubby hole, like I said. We've threaded the wire together and I've actually tucked 
the wire that's connected to this behind it. And then I've just got it fed through the side. Get a little bit of light. You can't really see it, but it runs in there, down along, and then we'll strap up the extra that's hanging down under the pedals. Just up here, out of sight, out of mind. But as long as you leave a little bit of slack behind here, if you ever want to adjust this thing or you got to remove it or move it, it's not a pain in the butt. You don't have to take anything that's hidden out. You can just unscrew it and it's out of there. All right, so everything is wired together now. We threw a couple in here. I don't have the lights that are actually going on in this truck quite yet, but we do have a couple just laying around. So we wired up a little light bar, a couple pods on side to side. And in here, this is labeled one to six, because obviously six gang switch, you got six panel or six spots to plug in. And on your switch, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. So whichever one you're plugging in, you know which button to click on the inside. All right, so like I said, we got these lights kind of jerry-rigged here just to show you guys what's what. So if Richard inside hits spot number one, where we plugged in the pod lights, you can see, they both turn on, and then if you hit spot number four, which was the light bar, there you go, she comes on. It's as easy as that. You can turn them both on if you like, and there is an app with this thing, and you can do all sorts of things. You can do strobe light. You can program it to turn on what's what between everything else. If you want more than one coming on at once, you can pre-program it with the power switch, but all that is enough for a whole other video. So this one, I'm just going to leave with the simple install like it is now. But at least you guys can see how exactly this thing works and just how easy it is to use. All right, so now this is actually the next day. I haven't got this thing mounted 100% yet, but I did notice something driving around in the daylight. And now we were putting this in at night, so it was dark. And yes, the garages both have lights on, but the truck does not pick that up as daylight. So with the lights being in auto right here when we were to put the truck into accessory mode you can see it lights up power is on yes that works except when you back out because it's connected to the light somehow and your automatic lights obviously seeing sunshine and brightness turn off and that actually had no power during the day now for myself, it just happens to be that I would rather have that because one, if I have a bunch of lights hooked up to this thing during the day, I'm not going to be driving around with them in the daytime. Two, you won't have this thing lit up in your face all the time, less distraction and everything. And three is this now, because it is hooked up to the lights, you don't have to have it in accessory mode or anything. So you can see, we'll turn this right back off, let everything shut down. You can see it has power just because the lights pop on when you first shut off the vehicle. But if we open the door, close her up, give it a couple seconds, we'll lock it, and the power will go out when the headlights pop off again in a couple of seconds. So there you go, the lights are off, and again, the power's off. And now the vehicle is 100% shut down you don't have an accessory mode on, power's off, but if you want to show these lights off, you can just reach in here, turn to put your headlights on, and you got power. The light's on, you got power to the box. You're done showing off, turn it off. And then, you know, if you're out in the dark and you're cruising, your auto lights will automatically be on because you're in the dark, so the power will turn on just automatically. And then when it comes to daytime driving, it's off. You don't have the LED shining in your face and you're all good to go. All right, there you go, guys. The box is installed. Everything is good. Everything works. Like I said, hopefully this video isn't jumping around too badly. I was learning as I was going. This is a brand new truck. And when it comes to tapping into fuses, you don't know what's constant, what's AC power, what's going to be on, what's going to be off. So like I said, we did find the left hand or right hand clearance fuse under the control box there or under the fuse box aim for that one and you can play with it without having to turn the truck on at all it just controlled with the lights lights are off it's off lights are on it's on 
easy. You don't need a key. You want to show off to your buddies, you can flick it on, be done with it. And when it's dark and you like should be needing the lights, you can turn them on. And but if for some reason, maybe you're driving in the daytime, it's super dusty and you might have chase lights or something like that, you want them on, just turn your lights on manually because if it is really that dusty to the point where you need a big light bar or ditch lights or whatever your case is, having the headlights on is definitely probably a good idea anyways. So having that on, you'll have power to your control box and everything is good to go. So hopefully this helped you guys out if you're doing this on your own Frontier. If it is a different vehicle, everything is relatively the same. It's just placement of stuff and where you feed the wires through and of course where the fuse panel and stuff would be. But just play with it a little bit. You're not going to wreck anything. If you pull fuses, just make sure you put the same size fuse back in. You don't want to be pulling out a 10, putting in a 5 type of thing or pulling out a 10 and adding. You don't want to throw a 20 in there because whatever that thing is powering could possibly blow. But other than that, it's a pretty simple install. Like I said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Check out Ghostly Rich's channel and stay tuned because we do have a bunch of stuff coming for this truck now. Should all be showing up relatively soon and we'll get going on the fun stuff. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. We'll catch you in the next video.